Um, today what we're going to go through is we're going to start with a, a fish stock and then from there we're going to go into how to make a, a fish soup or you can even use a stock uh, to make some sort of curry or, or whatever you want. But the fish stock is pretty much the most important part of it. Like the other week we made a bone broth and there's so many essential beneficial uh, nutrients and vitamins and, and cofactors in there as well which will really help nourish the body. Same with the fish stock. So with the fish stock today we're going to just use, be using the fish heads. I mean with the fish heads as well it's already got the thyroid gland in there so you're also boiling up the thyroid gland which we'll go into and it's got a whole bunch of beneficial factors also. So if you look you know, throughout history, we've always been boiling up bones and making soups and stocks and sauces. Even the Japanese, 4,000 years ago, the Japanese doctors used to give fish soups, and especially with the thyroid in there and animal thyroid, to the aging people because they knew that they'd give them more vitality, more energy, and it'd give them some of that life back. So that's been used 4,000 years ago from the Japanese. Also, if you look at the Japanese, their breast cancer rates are very, very low. Um, and if you look on the other hand, they're also having lots of seafood and lots of these sort of soups made from the thyroid um, and the bones as well. So we're going to touch on a bit of the information on that also. So I'm not sure if you realise, but about 40% of Americans have got an underactive thyroid. So there's a whole bunch of people out there nowadays, you know, that if you've got a hypoactive thyroid, there's the three Fs, so you become fat, forgetful and fatigued and I see a lot of my clients a lot of people nowadays just don't have the energy they need to get around and do things so there could be some thyroid issues going on here you know we'll talk about later on maybe that there's some attachments in there with the adrenals and the thyroids and how they hold hands and work closely together but there's some things in this fish stock which is going to be amazing for your thyroid. So the first thing, like I said, there's the thyroid that's already in there, so we're boiling that up, and a lot of that nutrition is going to go straight to your thyroid. There's another thing in there which is iodine. And iodine has been used for you know a long time for a lot of health beneficial factors. If you look throughout the body, iodine's found in a couple places. It's very high in your thyroid, it's also very high in your ovaries, your breast tissue, parts of your brain and then also a little part in your eye. So you can see that in our some specific organs in our body, iodine is very high so you can tell that the iodine is needed. And in our diet nowadays, we're not getting enough iodine through the food. And this is one place we can really concentrate and get a lot of this sort of a, a, a product into our foods to help really nourish our thyroid, our breast tissue, our ovaries or if you're male, even your testes and then also our brain. I also see a lot of females nowadays which have got endometriosis, polycystic ovaries, they've got PMS. As you know, PMS should not be happening. There's, there should be no sort of pain or symptoms when you're going through your period. But however, this is almost you know common nowadays. It's been doing a bit of reading up on iodine and, and back in the past there were some bakers and things like this we were, were using bromide which was a type of an iodine. To, to sort of condition the bread. So they've been putting it into our foods and what that does is it'll actually block the absorption of iodine. And a lot of people aren't getting the iodine they need from the seafood, from seaweed, from making up bone broth and pulling it all out of the seafood into their food. So a lot of people are, are getting neglected and missing out on these essential sort of vitamins and minerals. Been reading up in a few studies um, to do with iodine and back in 1966 a Russian scientist did a whole bunch of studies with women who had uh, fibrocystic uh, breast disease and he found that by adding iodine to their diet about 70% of them benefited from, from this addition to their diet. In 93 there was also a Canadian study done and he had a whole bunch of people, females who had this fibrocystic uh, breast disease and he found about the same about 72 to 73 percent of people benefited from having the iodine added to their diet. The other thing as well is it does it's not going to just help breast cancer and fibrocystic breast disease it'll also help other cancers as well. Iodine is also very good for a lot of cancers because it it induces apoptosis. Apoptosis is the, the program death of the cell. Every cell in our body needs to die. There's, over, there's probably about 2 million blood cells die every second. 
you know, our whole body, our whole cellular structure will replace itself. I think some studies are saying nowadays within seven years. So every seven years, you've got a whole complete new body. So our, our cells are programmed to die, and by having iodine will help induce this apoptosis and keep our body turning over and nice and healthy. I hope you get a lot of benefit out of it. Watch along. This is probably one of the, the tastiest soups you can have. You, you know, we're going to put in there some fish and some chicken today, some prawns. But you can add any sort of seafood that you like. And it's, it's fantastic. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, today we're going to make a seafood soup. To start with, we want to make a, a nice uh, a fish stock. So I've just gone down to the local sea market and just got some heads. These work out to be about $3 a kilo. So, you know, for how much nutrition we can get out of them, these things are amazing. So I'm just going to chuck these straight into the... Uh, to the slow cooker. Then the next thing we have, just like our bone broth, is we've got our root vegetables. So I've got a whole bunch of carrots, I've got some celery, I've got some onion. I'm going to leave the skin on because there's not a lot of good nutrition in the skin. I'm going to put a little bit of salt, some black pepper, and then we've got some herbs. So I've just got some bay leaves and some uh, rosemary as well. We're just going to put that in. And then like always, using nice clean filtered water, we're just going to top it up bring it to the boil and then let it simmer. With the fish stock, we only need to keep it on for about three hours and it'll pull all the good stuff out of the bones. So there we go, it's all in there. We're just going to bring that to the boil and then we're going to let it simmer for about three hours. Alright, about four hours later, the stock's looking pretty good. So a lot of those good nutrition and minerals and stuff are now all in the water. So all we're going to do now is just need to strain this into a container and then we'll go from there. Okay, the stock's finished yesterday. Here it is here. And if you can see, it's quite gelatinous. It's not solid, but it's um, it's getting there. So we know that we've pulled out a lot of the good nutrition straight out of those bones and out of the head. So tonight, just to make the soup, a lot of time when I just look around the kitchen to see what ingredients I've got, I'm just going to whack stuff together. So I've got my fish stock that I made. I'm going to make this one a nice creamy one. So I've got some nice organic uh, coconut cream. I've got some turmeric. Normally I put in some lime. I haven't got any lime, so I'm going to just uh, substitute with some lemon. I've got some coriander, a bit of ginger there, some chilli. And I've got a bunch of veg. I've got some potato, I've got carrots, I've got some beans, I've got onions, and uh, some capsicum as well. So we're just going to all put that all together. There's my prawns. And I'm going to put even a bit of chicken in there as well. It doesn't have to be just seafood. Um, but, you know, you can put in fish, you can put in scallops and mussels or whatever you like. But tonight I'm just going to do a bit of a mix of uh, some prawns and some chicken. So what I'm going to do, the veggies are all chopped up, nice bite-sized pieces. I'm going to peel the prawns, so it's just the meat, and then I'm going to cut the chicken up into little little cubes, something that will fit on your spoon, um, and we'll go from there. Alright, got the stock on, got the vegetables in there, which is just going to start bringing to the boil. So the first thing, I'm going to get the vegetables to cook up first, and then I'm going to throw the chicken in, I'm going to put in the ginger, some of the chilli, some of the coriander, and the last thing I'll put in would be the prawns because they're probably going to take the least amount of time to cook. So they're probably only going to take, you know, maybe two minutes at a boiling point to, to, to bring it on. And then I'm just going to finish it off with some coconut cream as well. A little bit of turmeric. Quite rough. 
I've also got the lemon juice in there. Or if you've got lime juice, lime juice would be just as good. Coriander, just a nice good handful. And then we're just going to let that bring it to the boil. Alright, let's come to the boil now. And that, the, the infusion of the coriander, the lime, the ginger, man, it just smells amazing. So the next thing we're going to do is just chuck the prawn straight in there. And you're probably looking at now about two minutes until it's probably ready. So the next step, I'm just going to add in a whole bunch of coconut cream as well. Probably about three quarters of a tin. Alright, so here it is here, starting to come to the boil. You can see the nice big bits of chicken through there. And again, like I said, I usually try and cut everything about spoon size so that when you get a, a spoonful, you get a little bit of veg on there, some chicken or whatever sort of meat. So I could have probably even cut these prawns up into half, because you know, that's a fair size. So again, like I said, bring it back to the boil. These prawns are already starting to go colour, so you're just waiting till this starts to go um, from the translucent colour to white. So it probably needs another minute. And then the last thing you need to do is just taste it, see if it needs any more chilli, or if it needs a bit of salt, or pepper, or whatever you want. And there we go. There's things you need to hear So turn off your tears And listen Pain throws your heart to the ground Love turns the whole thing around 